Hey guys, um, it's Taylor, back with another week of uh, devotions and fun stuff like that. And I, I, I can't do this. Taylor's way cooler than I am. It's just, it's not going to work. Hi, uh, I'm Camden Jones. Um, I'm a junior getting ready to be a senior at Central Harden. And uh, I go to First Christian, like most of you guys watching. And um, I am going to be doing our devotion for this week. And I'm really excited because... This week we're talking about something that's somewhat personal to me, um, and it's really cool how much God's affected my life in this way. Um, so, for the past couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about this theme of hope. Hope is a beautiful, God-given thing that we all get to enjoy, especially now. Uh, we're in a time of isolation and uncertainty, but as we've seen in the past couple of days, past couple of weeks, Hope is always right around the corner. And what good is hope without sharing it? You know, I like to think of uh, the end of one of my favorite Christmas movies, Scrooged. Now, as you might have guessed, it's uh, very much like a Christmas carol, Christmas carol uh, based on the name, except it's Bill Murray, so it's awesome. <laughs> Towards the end of the movie, Bill Murray's character, Frank Cross, uh, runs onto the set of his network's live performance of A Christmas Carol and delivers a speech. You see, throughout the entire movie, Frank Cross had been a heartless, mean man. But now, he finally knows the true meaning of Christmas and can't wait to share it with the world. Now, he goes on live television and spreads the joy that he's found, and the whole thing ends in an incredible rendition of Put a Little Love in Your Heart by Jackie DeShannon. Now, if you guys haven't seen that movie yet, I highly recommend it when, uh, when it comes Christmas time, or if you're one of those people, just watch it right now. Um, because as we talk about hope, this hope for a brighter future, uh, for a better relationship with God, and for our lives to go back to normal, why not share this hope? In the same way that hope is no good unless we spread it, James tells us in James 2, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So what is faith with deeds? Uh, what does this action look like? Well, we have a word for that. It's called kingdom work. Now, it's actually what this KW on my shirt stands for. Uh, I got this shirt at CIY uh, Move last year. Um, it's a really great shirt, actually. Um, and it's a great trip that we went on. Now, if you've never been on a CIY trip with us, or with somebody, uh, you may be a little confused, and if you don't know what CIY is, you're very confused. Um, so CIY stands for Christ and Youth. Um, it's a foundation that provides kids like us an opportunity to get to know Christ in a whole new way. Uh, through conventions and week-long trips, they define kingdom work as the ministry of all disciples, leveraging their gifts, talents, and abilities and influences to advance king, God's kingdom by making disciples of all nations and teaching them to observe all that Christ commands. Now, basically, what this is saying is that we use our God-given gifts and talents to carry out the Good Commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the ultimate goal. Now, if you guys see me around, um, you'll probably notice that I always have at least two bracelets on other than my watch. Um, actually, right now I have three. Uh, the first of which is a bracelet that I got uh, for attending CIY Believe this year. I got to help out with it. It's a great middle school conference uh, that CIY puts on. We go to the one in Louisville, and it's just a really cool way to get to know, um, get to know God in a whole new way. Plus, I met Juggling Josh there, which was awesome. Um, now, if you guys are going to be in middle school next year, um, I highly recommend going on this trip if you can. It's an awesome experience. Now, my second uh, bracelet is from CIY Move last year. We went to Michigan, and it was a ton of fun. Um, now, I was saying Believe is awesome, and you should go if you're in middle school. Uh, Move is a conference for high schoolers, and it's a week long in the summer. And... Believe is awesome, but I think my MOVE crew can agree with me on this. Uh, MOVE is awesome-er. Yeah, that's a word. Um, MOVE is a great experience, and I learned so much my past couple years going to these conferences and conventions, and it's just, it's such a great experience. So if you can, please join us on some of these trips. 
Um, my third bracelet is from another MOVE conference, uh, but this one isn't like the others. Uh, this was one that we chose. Um, this MOVE conference was our trip to Cedarville, I believe, uh, Ohio, and we had the option of choosing between three or four bracelets that all meant different things. Uh, these bracelets meant things that we could grow in our relationship with God. Uh, I chose the one that said reach because I felt I needed to grow with God in this area. This reach uh, means I was supposed to find ways to reach into the community and spread God's love and the good news of the gospel. So I started to pray about what I should do because I didn't really know what that meant for me. I prayed and I prayed until finally I got an answer. And my answer was a weird one. It wasn't a specific assessment or assignment, uh, no big organizations to create, no huge plans right now, just help. That's what was put on my heart. Help in any way you can. So that's what I've done. I've helped around church. I've helped in sports teams. I've helped at school. I've helped my friends in any way possible. And that's what kingdom work is, helping others and showing God's love to further the kingdom. Kingdom work can be anything you do in your area of influence you might have, uh, like school, sports, or even just hanging with your friends that shows God's love and spreads the gospel. We've been talking on Sundays about how to bring joy to people and give them this hope that we have in this time. Uh, we've come up with anywhere from making cards uh, to driving by people's houses or even just talking to them on the phone. Kingdom work, kingdom work isn't flashy. It's not about taking credit. Kingdom work is about serving and living as Christ did to spread this hope and good news that we have. So as an example of what kingdom work can be, um, I'd like to take us back to 2014-ish, I think, uh, my sixth grade year. Um, now, that was a weird time for me. Um, if you guys knew me back then, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, to put it short, I had some very interesting fashion decisions that I made. That's how we're going to say it. Um, <laughs> I had like much, much more bracelets than I do now. I'll tell you that much. Um, and some incredibly long socks. Yeah, it, it was something else. Um, but along with that, I started to carpool, uh, with, with a friend of mine to school. Now, my friend had not really been to church a whole lot throughout his life, and I knew he was a great guy, but I really wanted him to, you know, come and know Christ. Um, and so, just on a whim, or what I thought was on a whim, uh, I asked him to come to one of our fun nights at church. I think it was like a Wednesday night, and I think it was maybe dodgeball or an inflatable night or something fun like that. And so he came, and he really had a ton of fun. And he enjoyed it and told me he wanted to come back. And I was like, yeah, come back, please. Then I second guessed myself and I was like, wait, this, you realize that church isn't always like this. And he was like, yeah, sure. I, I want to come back. And so I, he came back with me and to my surprise, although it shouldn't have been, but I was young. Um, he came back and he loved church. He loved coming and having conversations with people about life and just living and, and experiencing life with a whole new community. And I, I was too young and too, I, I don't know, something to know this, but that was God working through me. That was God working through me in ways that I didn't even, didn't even know were possible to get one of my closest friends to come to church with me. And now, almost seven years later, wow, um, he is heavily invested in our church. And you'll see him up on stage doing worship and having fun on Sunday nights. And that just goes to show you, God's there for us. We're not alone in this struggle against our world. We're not alone in this struggle in our kingdom work. It doesn't have to be scary, not when you have the creator of everything helping you. So... This next week, as we go about our quarantined lives, let's try and find ways to spread the hope, spread the joy that we have, knowing God is in control. He's with us through all of this. There's no need to be afraid. To close us out, um, I, I'd like to pray a prayer that Paul wrote in prison. 
um, to the church in Ephesus. Would you pray with me? Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am the ambassador for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen.